This morning I'm talking with uh, Robert Miner. Robert's uh, been in the business uh, a year or two, well, or two years. 19 altogether, yeah. <laughs> 19 years yeah. in this business. And you've seen quite a lot of water under the bridge in, in, in that time, uh, Robert. Yeah, it's been very interesting because we've been through major bull markets, bear markets, trading range markets, just over that 19 or 20 year span. Uh, between the indexes, the S&P sort of thing, or the commodities, and we've had a lot of different types of markets and a lot of exciting times. Absolutely. You, you hear so much from younger guys who've probably been in the business and they've just seen part of one cycle, mm -hmm. and they just haven't seen the big booms and busts. Right, yeah. They de definitely, you learn an awful lot uh, experience-wise from having been in different types of markets. Sure, yeah, yeah. Now, um, Bob, I should call you Bob. Yes, please. If we can just sort of kick off with how you really got started in trading, what, mm -hmm. what, what triggered you off to the markets and, and what were you doing before, if I might mm -hmm. ask? <laughs> well, it's really interesting because uh, before I started trading as I was a real estate agent in Tucson, Arizona, and this is in early 1980s, and I read an article about real estate cycles, and I went to the University of Arizona library, and over a course of time, I um, read every issue of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, which first began publishing in the early 1950s. So I read over almost 30 years worth of those uh, quarterly journals because I was interested in real estate cycles, and then I learned about other financial cycles. And the interesting thing was is I learned that when I was doing this in the early 80s, that an uh, issue from 1976 had projected that the real estate, real estate cycle would top around 1980. And this is 82 or 83 when I read this. And, and of course, that's when interest rates were in the double digits. And it was the peak of that real estate cycle that was projected years in advance. So that was kind of the beginning of it, learning about cycles and booms of, and busts of various markets. So that really got your interest then, I guess, in, in then looking at how these cycles are going to apply to uh, stock markets, commodity markets, and so on. Right, exactly. And, and back then it was mostly we traded, uh, at least I did, and most of the people I knew, we traded commodity markets uh, just because the, a lot of the financial markets weren't real popular yet. And all of us were doing hand charting, so we didn't even have computers. They were available, but at the time they were very expensive <laughs> sort of thing, and data was very expensive. and. Um, all the charts that I did were hand drawn every day and I even uh, for a while was, would go to the brokerage company just so I could look at their screen and, and hand draw 15 minute bars as they were being made. So it was, that was a real education on, uh, in fact I recommend today people even, I know most of them won't do it even though I recommend it to them, but take a couple markets and hand chart them because you can learn a lot about little subtleties of price patterns by drawing that bar every day. Getting really sort of up close and yep. well and truly into, into the action there. Exactly. But I would just say, if you're doing it on, on, on 15 minute bars, yeah. I mean, that really is real time. Yeah, it? that's very much real time. You draw it yeah. in, you do your calculations with your calculator and uh, you know, did a lot of just basic uh, chart analysis of support resistance and trend lines. and. A, of course, I was doing a lot of GAN type analysis then too, so I did a lot of chart geometry as it was being made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's interesting because uh, I mean, GAN is sort of widely read, and uh, you know, he's reputed to have made a lot of money up to some some point. Reputed to. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever found it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> It actually very interesting is there has been some people went down and looked at his estate after he died. I mean, this is just in the last 10 or 15 years. And he actually was fairly well off when he passed away, and I think it was 53 or 54. He had a, a state of, a, I think it was $350,000, $450,000, which in 1953 money is pretty good. It was reasonably significant. But his son has also has done some interviews and said he also went bust a couple times along the way. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's almost find me a trader who hasn't at some point blown up and yeah. has, uh, has gone bust. You yeah, know, the, uh, the stories of Jesse Livermore, of course. Of, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. that we've all read. Well, that's what people like me are <clears throat> part of the trading education industry as well. Is we're we're hopefully going to teach people not to go bust, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and have a little less expensive learning experience that many of us had. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So in those early